Hey guys, a uh, new video for Path of Exile. So this video we're going to go over my um, my budget transcendence armor stacker. Well, if you call it budget, I mean, we are using stuff like Mage Blood. But, you know, for these kind of armor stacking builds, um, this level of gear is um, actually considered budget. You know, um, it's not really like your usual 10 budget build, but usually these transcendence builds are like constant multiple mirrors. I think last league I ended up spending about... Uh, well, not spending, but the character was worth about 30 or 40 mirrors by the time I finished playing. So just to give you an idea of what these characters are usually, you know, people are spending on these characters. So, you know, in that sense, um, just the mage blood and the rest of the items being read relatively cheap. I guess there is a Nimbus here too, but I guess when I bought it, it was very cheap. But now it's gone back up in price. But... Even that, you know, these two items would be considered, you know, these would be like the cheaper items for this build usually. So that's why I'm calling it budget, uh, you know, say what you will, but it is what it is. Okay, so it's an armor stacker running Transcendence. Uh, Transcendence basically, don't really know what it does. It gives you a lot of um, elemental hit damage mitigation that applies after your resistances. So you reduce incoming damage two times. Um, this does come at the downside of armor not working for or applying to your fizz damage for, uh, mitigation, so you have to sort of take care of that. Um, and we're doing that by just converting all of our fizz uh, damage taken into elemental and chaos and this kind of stuff. So, the character ends up being very tanky at about like 1 million EHP with Molten Shell up. Uh, damage is pretty good as well. And uh, we're going to go over how to build this character. Uh, we'll do a few map showcases and, and that kind of stuff. Okay, so if you are very new to armor stacking, then I suggest you check out my armor stacking for dummies series that goes over a lot of the basic concepts and that kind of stuff and gear about armor stacking. And uh, this build, it is a little bit more ex on the expensive side, I, I guess, you know, for if you would, you know, regular builds. Uh, so, if you're interested in a cheaper version, I do have another one that runs a Doriani's prototype setup. Not really as tanky in terms of max hit, but it does use Aegis and it's like pretty, you know, pretty good sustain. So that one would be a lot more affordable, I think, and it'd be easier to run on, I mean, without a Mage Blood. Okay, so with that out of the way, um, let's talk a little bit about this build. So this build was um, sort of a mistake, actually, or the result of a mistake. So, I mean, well... Usually, I actually make this build with uh, a Grasping Mill and um, a Hubris Circlet and this kind of stuff. And so I was crafting the Grasping Mill. Um, these bases are like, I think I bought mine for like 140 div or something like that. So the bases are very expensive. And you have to use Hinokor's locks basically to annul off the bad prefix. Usually, they're full, the prefixes are full. And then you have to uh, do the suffixes and... I wanted to have a fractured unveil, so I was using Kinecore's locks to get that fracture so we don't miss. Ended up spending about um, nine Hinecore's locks to do both of those. And then I was working on the prefixes and probably spent another like 200 plus divs on like Eldritch currency and this kind of stuff. Yeah, basically what happened was I used the wrong annul and annulled off one of the very valuable breach mods from the Grasping Mail and bricked the chest. So. Basically, I was kind of screwed because I'd spent all my money trying to make this and I just basically threw it in the trash. So uh, I guess because of that, I sort of thought of doing a, you know, cheaper Transcendence build. So I guess you could say, you know, good some good things do happen out of mistakes, I guess, because I probably wouldn't have thought of doing this if that hadn't happened. So I guess everything works worked out um, for good in the end, which is kind of cool. All right, so what can this build do? Well, this build, I'd say, can pretty much do almost all content in the game in its current state. Um, I've killed Ubers. I've done normal pinnacle bosses. I've done T-17s. I've done juiced mapping. Um, and you can use a lot of different skills on these armor stacking builds. Pretty much any skill that you can use with a sword can be used. And uh, right now, I'm sort of cycling between two skills. So right now, I'm doing a little bit more... Um, mapping focus, you know, just having some fun on Jungle Valley with Harbingers. Uh, so I'm using the Lightning Strike of Arcing with GMP, and this feels really, really good for uh, clearing. I'll show you a showcase of both of these. And then um, when I go to bosses or harder content, I like to use Molten Strike because Molten Strike 
is um, pretty much the highest single target attack that you can use with the sword because all these little projectiles are going to be shotgunning and we have a lot of proj and they all return and they all hit so it's like uh, insane damage but not really good on clear so i'll show you both of those uh, in this video we will do a t17 fortress and then we'll also do this um, i'm going to have to recolor my chest to actually use molten strike but it's not really end of the world hopefully i have enough all orbs but yeah let's get into the uh, showcases so first of all uh, we're going to do the jungle valley it's eight mod um yeah let's do this one so right now i'm just doing some harbinger stuff the atlas doesn't really matter it's um uh, nothing really special you know it's just like some harbinger and then scarabs and stuff like that pretty much just harbinger scarabs lightning strike of arcing very very cool because um it has very very high like chaining range and notice that like you'll be um killing things like completely off screen because of all of these chains so it is um pretty pretty nice for clear i think and then like for mapping you can also change your flasks around so i'm using like a quicksilver instead of a stib knight because well don't really need the damage for these kind of maps and you know you still you still are at about like a million armor even without a stib knight flask so it is uh, pretty nice All right, so let's see. Um, in these kind of maps, you're pretty much never going to really die. Right now, we have about 2,000 ES regen, which is a little bit on the lower side, but um, it, it is going to be kind of hard to get it over 2K with this setup. But you know, later on, if you build into a grasping mill, you can get up to like 6,500 ES regen. Which is going to be pretty, pretty nice. Wow, a lot of agent orbs. You know what, let's uh, not loot this now. But yeah, um, so clear-wise, not super fast, but you know, definitely doable. Uh, you can invest a little bit more into movement speed and this kind of stuff. But I think we are at about like, what, 200-ish. Oh yeah, 180, 180 something. So yeah, if we just like go clear, it's like, um, pretty much all you have to do is just, I guess because we're using Nimus, you just kind of click and everything just chains. Um, okay. Get the altars, the harbingers, maybe get some mirrors or mirror shards. And you can see, you know, you just don't take damage because of transcendence, which is pretty nice. The only real weakness to these kind of builds is degen, and that's why we are actually building a lot into um, ES regen and recovery like ES recovery rate and this kind of stuff because you know as you can see hit damage usually isn't the thing that's going to kill you but um, you know stuff like degen and these kind of things are something that is not really mitigated by transcendence so um, it's something that is sort of a problem I guess I guess until you get enough ES regen once you get enough ES regen then nothing can really kill you all right so I think this map is sort of going to be kind of long, so what we'll do is we'll cut out um, because I think that's kind of enough for the showcase. Okay, so now let's do sort of more um, harder content showcase. Uh, we were going to do T17, uh, but I think maybe we'll do both, but I think we'll do Evaldo's map with the Feared in it. So for this uh, setup, we're doing something a little bit differently. I'm, I'm running the utmost instead of my ashes. I'll go over this in the gearing section but basically ashes is more damage but um the utmost gives you plus six to maximum uh element resistances and that puts me all the way at 86 uh, max res and without it you can see i'm only at like 80. let's pop the map in and i'll get back to you guys when we find the feared all right so uh, i had to go away but we're back and we did find the feared they're up here so we'll go fight them and um, one thing to note about this fight is, so this character is very tanky against hit damage because of Transcendence. Um, but we are kind of vulnerable to degen. So the way we're going to deal with this in endgame version of the build is to stack a lot of life uh, or ES regeneration. You can see I am about at 2k or so uh, ES regen and endgame versions of the build will go all the way up to like 6k. So right now there's three degens that the feared like can do that's going to be the shaper beam then there's like these ground degens so 
those will kill this character. So hopefully we just don't die over and over and over again. And we do want to kill the Shaper first if I can find him. Oh, there he is. Okay, so let's kill Shaper. Okay, we killed one of them. And there's another beam. Okay, right. Probably kill him off here. Almost died. Yeah. Got stuck in the Elder Pool, which is kind of unfortunate. But yeah, not really the end of the world. We can go finish off the fight now, I think. Uh, I thought we killed the Shaper. Oh no, he's still alive. But now he's dead. Okay. And after this, we want to kill off Elder or Etsiri, I guess. Yeah, let's do Atsiri. Or we just kill all of them off. Alright, now it's just Mr. Cortex. And Cortex is pretty easy. Okay, so that was sort of the showcases. As you can see, some gameplay. Uh, let's go in to how to build the character. And I think, first of all, we'll go over a couple of the uh, important breakpoints that we need for this character. So first of all, let's talk about running Transcendence, getting Transcendence to work. And basically because Transcendence is removing um, all of our Fizz damage reduction from armor, we have to do something about Fizz damage. And the way we're going to um, take care of this is we are going to convert all of our physical damage taken into Chaos. The way we're doing that is we have um, 50% on the lightning coil, then we have another 20% or 28% on our Dawnbreaker, and then we do have some more on this Watcher's Eye, another 22%. So uh, that's how we're actually doing it. Now there is more sources of this is taken as, like you could use a Taste of Hate over here. Uh, I believe this rolls up to 15%, so if you don't have a double mod watcher's eye what you could do is you could just run a taste of hate like this and uh, you would be fine so you don't really actually need a double purity watcher's eye there is also another 10 percent you can grab over here on this mastery it does cost four points but you know it is possible to do so basically important that you do get 100 percent um or at least you know like you know what 90 99 percent but you know ideally 100 percent converted to elemental or chaos or whatever Otherwise, you're just going to, you know, get one shot by physical damage. All right. So uh, this is the POB. I'll have a couple of POBs in the Armor Sector Compendium Google Doc you find in, in the description that's going to have different gear levels. So there is one that is actually running without a Nimbus because like when I originally originally um, swapped over to this build, I didn't have a Nimbus. So I was playing without the Nimbus. So I have that POB still. You guys can follow if you don't have one yet. Um, but basically, we need to get all of these auras running. You can see um, we have our Wrath, Determination, uh, Purity of Fire, Purity of Elements, and all these other auras. So that's why we're getting all of these um, voices. There is one 35% increased effect cluster somewhere. Yeah, I did need one of these. And we have two Enlightens, I believe. Yeah, two level four Enlightens. But on the uh, non Nimbus PLB, I had. Um, only level three enlightens so you don't really you can start out with just the um what do you call it uh, level three enlightens if you need if you don't have that level four ones yet but when you do upgrade to a nimbus then you are going to need those so uh next kind of breakpoint we need to look out for is how are we going to reduce the mana cost of our um divine blessing you see mine is costing about 55 mana and the way we're doing this um is so in the Armor Stack Compendium, there is a couple of examples you can use. And the one we're using now is, first of all, we have um, some mana reduction here on this Dreamer area uh, on the passive tree. And then we do have another 40% um, coming in from the Inspiration Gem. And the rest of the reduction we're getting is going to be from this ring. So in order to run Nimbus, you do need to have a ring similar to this with a synthesized 5% reduced mana cost of skills. And then you also need to have a unveiled reduced mana cost of skills. And then I've also crafted a minus eight to channel uh, skills craft on here. So without this minus uh, eight, um, my grace, instead of costing um, 55 mana, it would be like 60 something. 
So that de definitely does make a difference. It also helps for Molten Strike. So that's how we're uh, reducing the mana for the Divine Blessing. Now, if you're not using Nimbus, it's a lot simpler. You don't need this kind of ring. Basically, just have two rings with reduced mana cost and you're kind of fine. So that's the two main important breakpoints to worry about um, that you need to you know, be aware of when you're making the build. First is the getting the Transcendence physical damage taken to Elemental or Chaos. Get that taken care of first. Then take care of the mana cost for the Divine Blessing. And after that, the rest of the stuff is pretty simple. Okay, so let's get over uh, the gearing. This tree is going down to precise technique and point blank. So uh, we're also using, gonna be using a resolute technique replica dream feather. This is pretty important because this means our hits can't be evaded. So we don't have to run precision. We don't have to get any kind of accuracy. And it really does save points and mana reservation because we don't have to run a precision aura. So these can be kind of expensive, but what you can do is you can just buy a whole bunch of them, uh, corrupt them yourself, and eventually you'll get your Resolute Technique. Uh, I just bought this because I found one for very cheap, but if you don't really want to go buy it, then definitely try to make your own. It'll be a lot cheaper than actually buying one. Okay, so for the helmet, uh, we're going to be using the Formulas Flame because this gives us the Armors Increased by Overcap Fire Resistance mod. This is uh, where a lot of our damage is actually coming from. Because if you see, I have about 480 fire resistance, and that's increasing my armor by quite a bit. If we take out this helmet, see our damage is going to drop by quite a bit. So yeah, uh, basically we lost 200% of our damage. It's like tripling our damage, the Formless Flame. I'm using one with a plus two aura gems. You can also have a plus two AoE, or pretty much you don't even really need it because they can be expensive, but um, super easy to make. All you do is basically just buy them. They're like three to four C and then you just corrupt a whole bunch. I did it like, uh, how do you know, just a whole inventory full of these and then corrupted all of them and I got one. So pretty easy. And I actually just sold that one for like 20 div and then I bought some more and I made another one. So you can actually probably make some profit uh, mass corrupting these helmets. All right. And so for the body armor, um, lightning coil, uh, because of the physical, you know, 50% fizz taken as lightning that helps with um, getting our PTA for Transcendence. Uh, there is another chest you might, uh, you could use. It's like the um, Cloak of Flame. That's only 40%, but that does have like, can roll up to like 75 fire resistance, which will end up giving you more armor, but it's up to you. You will have to actually use a Taste of Hate instead of a Bottled Faith. So at the end of the day, I think the Lightning Coil is a better option. It does come with a actually pretty annoying downside of minus 60 to Lightning Res. So you do have to work pretty hard getting lightning resistance on items like you see I have it on my ring and then I have um, a lot on like clusters I think somewhere. But yeah, it's gonna you're gonna have to make sure you get lightning resistance somewhere if you're using this and you definitely do want to get one with plus one to maximum all resistances um, because you know getting max res is uh, kind of hard on transcendence. Um, basically, um, I just bought this chest for like a couple of chaos. It was like what 50 C. Oh, like 100c on trade and then i just use the four link um, benchcraft to four link it uh on a four socket it and then you you basically just use these tainted currencies right you get the tainted jewelers to get a six socket and then use the tainted fusings to get the six link pretty simple pretty cheap um in total only costs like two divines to actually get this all right so let's take a look at the ring so the ring very important that you can see first of all the catalyst we're going to use is the life in mana catalyst because this is actually going to change our 5% implicit up to a 6% and our 7% uh, reduced mana cost of the skills on the explicit goes up to 8% also does increase the non-channeling so this is without this the grace blessing would be costing like 100 mana and I probably wouldn't be able to cast it so very important that you do get the catalyst and the implicit um, with the reduced mana cost of skills and after that, what you're looking for on the ring is going to be resistances, mainly fire resistance. Um, and then I guess uh, intelligence is nice for energy shield because you see we are pretty low ES, only like 2k ES. So getting intelligence is going to be nice. Um, and then prefixes, basically what you do is you work on the suffixes with the essence. I, I use the um, essence of spite for the intelligence till I got some good resistance. Uh, and then you just do um, suffixes can't be changed. Veiled Chaos Orb, Block Life, Unveil, and this mana, uh, Reduced Mana Cost of Skills, is a very, very common unveil, so it shouldn't take that long. It took me like two tries. 
to uh, get this. Now these veiled orbs are kind of expensive, so crafting this ring might be kind of annoying, but uh, you do need it. Now can you cannot just use the crafted one. I guess one way to get around this is by just getting more reservation, right? So you can see if you have a lot of 35% increased effect small clusters, I, I don't have, or I have two of them, right? So I have two of them here, but if you just got more of these, then you can actually get more reservation to actually um, be able to cast your Grace Aura because without the extra, what do you call it, stuff, it's going to cost more mana. But what you could also do is you could just turn off Vitality, right? So if you turn off Vitality, you can see you still do have about 1k um, ES regen, so it's definitely kind of manageable, I think. And when I started playing this build, I wasn't even running Vitality because I didn't even have uh, the mana to um, cast it. So it, it's totally fine for like if you're doing mapping and some kind of stuff. Even I, I think I even did a T17 um, without Vitality on. It was totally fine. But yeah. Anyways, so that's the ring. Uh, let's go over. Uh, let's just see. Let's go over the gloves. So gloves um, going to be kind of annoying to craft these, but uh, you definitely need them. I'll tell you where, where what you can do to make it a bit cheaper. So first of all, we do want a pair of sorcerer gloves with fractured flat ES. Very important. You get the flat and not the increased. So why is this? Well, if we take a look at the um, gloves craft over here. So the maximum amount of flat energy shield you can craft on a pair of gloves is 22. That's really low, basically. All right. Whereas the increased is 74, which is pretty high. If you have like 100% increased energy shield and you craft on plus 22, you're not going to be getting 210 ES on these gloves. You'll get like 150. So very important to get the uh, flat fractured. Um, and then what you do is you use the essence of uh, zeal for the attack speed. What you're looking for ideally is um, fire resistance, number one, or any kind of resistance, right? Uh, even if it's like a double resistance, that's fine. That's good. It'll work. Um, intelligence, very good for the ES. Uh, or um, flat life regen. If you get like T3, T2 plus life regen, I would definitely keep that. Um, because uh, any kind of life regen we get is going to be um, doubled, basically, or tripled. So uh, basically, after you get your suffixes, uh, since we do have the flat ES fractured, it's actually very easy to uh, get it unveil. Now, you don't te technically need the unveil. And why is this? Well, the reason that you need, we, we do need a plus two to gem somewhere because we need our purity of fire to turn level 23. Worst case scenario, if you don't have a plus two helmet and you only have, say, the crafted version of the plus uh, gem level, AOE gem level, so it's going to be a plus one, then your purity of fire is going to be level 22. But if you're using ashes, then your purity of fire is going to be level 23, allowing you to hit plus five additional maximum fire resistance. So you see without level 23, it's only plus four. And this is all scaled by aura effect. So uh, getting it to a plus five, you know, 5% 5 additional maximum fire res is pretty important. Right, so worst case scenario, like we said, you have just a normal helmet, no plus two on this. You get a crafted plus one gem and you use ashes. And then you'll have your purity of fire level, you know, level 23. But, you know, um, if you want a nice pair of gloves like this one, then what you do is you just do suffixes can't be changed, build chaos orb, block something. Um, not really sure. You know, all the glove weights are, I think you can pretty much block anything for gloves because the weights are all pretty much the same. And then where you get the AOE gem, it took me like three tries. Um, so definitely not very cheap to make to go for the unveil. Um, okay, so after and after that, just craft on ES, right? Unless you're trying to make a mirror pair of gloves, then um, don't even bother. And then for the um, implicits, basically, you definitely need the non vile skill strike at least one additional nearby enemy. At least one. You don't really need two. So you don't have to elevate if you don't want to. Although these um, uh, Orb of Conflicts are not really that expensive. You know, they're only like uh, 0.5... Uh, divine so uh, not really that bad elevating but up to you and then i guess the uh, other implicit you would want is going to be mark effect probably gonna be the best other than that there is lightning exposure which is okay but we already do have lightning exposure coming from the awakened lightning penetration so not really that important to get it on gloves okay so that is the gloves um now let's see let's talk about the belt first 
I guess I, re I would definitely recommend starting this version of the build with a Mage Blood, um, because Transcendence does need a lot of max res, and you see our Ruby Flask is giving plus 5 to maximum fire res, and this gets scaled by the increased effect on the flask, so it's actually 9% fi max fire res. You see, without this flask, you're, you would be at like 74 or 75, 74 or 75 when your flask is up. And there's no guarantee that's going to be always up. So technically you could run this at, with just without a mage blood with like, say, a string of servitude with grace aura effect or the magnate or some other kind of belt, like a flask belt. And it would probably work because even, you know, 75 res transcendence is still very, very, very tanky. But I'm, I wouldn't, I, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend it. If you really, really want to try it, then go for it. But can't really help you there. Um, all right, so let's talk about amulets. So there's three different amulet choices um, that you could probably use. Let's just grab my old amulet over here. All right, so we have, let's see, we have Ashes, Eternal Struggle, the utmost. So there's three amulets that I'm, I would recommend using. And let's go over the... Uh, different amulets. So, Ashes. Ashes is cheapest. It's very cheap. I bought this for 2 div. 28 quality. Now, there is certain breakpoints uh, where the damage from the quality does start scaling even more, and I found it to be 28. That's when there was like a very big jump. So I think try to get one at least 28 quality plus. Um, this, basically, the reason why this gives so much damage is, well, the plus one to all skills is very good because you get extra levels on Grace, extra levels on Smite, Molten Strike, Determination, Wrath, everything just gets more levels and that's quite a lot of damage combined. Uh, after that, the quality on this gem gives our Molten Strike more damage because Molten Strike has, um, quality is giving you more damage with hits and ailments for the projectiles, right? So that extra quality, you can see we're at minus, you know, 40% less damage with hits but with Ashes, you can see it's only 26%. So, um, definitely very nice for getting more damage on your Molten Strike and everything in general. Uh, downside is that it doesn't have any aura effect on it like something like an Eternal Struggle. So that means that you're going to be a little bit less tanky. You can see with um, Ashes, we're at... Um, oh, we do have to actually turn our Aura's on. We're at 80 Max Res. But if we equip a Eternal Struggle, we go all the way up to 81 because we've hit another breakpoint for Aura effect by having this Eternal Struggle. So that's one thing to note. Um, but Ash is cheapest overall, most, and does pro probably the most damage that you can get. Now, very, very end game, the utmost will, might be doing more damage than Ashes if you have a very, very good rolled one, but that's going to be costing like multiple mirrors probably. So. Um, I'd, I'd say Ashes is probably going to be the go-to amulet for most people. Now, Eternal Struggle, uh, it's like, like you know, like we said, it gives you an extra one extra max res because of the horrific breakpoints, and this amulet does actually give you Calling Strike. Now, you do want to have at least a 13 or 14 percent plus increased effect of non-curse auras, or this amulet is not even worth it. And you do want to make sure that the um, Searing Exarch is dominant, so we get the 15 percent Calling Strike. So that. Like, if it's not a 14% plus, then I would say don't even bother with it and just buy the Ashes. And the only reason I would actually use Eternal Struggle over Ashes is if you already had an Eternal Struggle and you didn't want to go and buy an Ashes, pretty much. Because in pretty much every way, Ashes is going to be a little bit better. I'd say you do lose the one max res, but yeah, you get so much more damage out of Ashes that I think it is going to be better. Um, but then again, this uh, Eternal Struggle is actually giving you a lot more energy shield uh, because of the global defense and the intelligence and all the stats that it does give makes gearing quite a lot easier. So in that sense, Eternal Struggle does have that going for it. It's just like overall a very well-rounded amulet, gives you a little bit of defense from the max res, gives you some damage, gives you calling strike, gives you a lot of attributes, more energy shield. So definitely very, very nice to have. Okay, utmost. This one is a new amulet, this patch. And the main cool thing about this is it can roll up to 5% to all maximum elemental resistances, which is pretty amazing. There is very little sources of, you know, maximum elemental resistances and uh, pretty insane. And it's a 5%, but you can bump it up to a 6% if you use the resistance modifier catalysts. And you have to use these kind of like um, special catalysts over here. If we can find them. Yeah, these, the tainted catalysts. So we use these and... Basically, you have to hit 
resistance modifiers and it goes up to six percent now this also does come with like 20 percent elemental pen also attack and cast speed up to 40 percent pretty insane if you did get one with like five max res and a lot of elemental penetration it might end up doing more damage than the ashes but like say the ones that i have now these two the ashes is like um quite a bit more damage you can see if we go into pob ashes we're at about 6.2 million hit dps um, the utmost we go down to 4.4 so it's like another 2 point something million dps you can see the full dps down to 60 million with the utmost and going all the way up to 80 million with the ashes so uh definitely very very cool um amulet but you are going to be losing some damage but you can see the max res is going all the way up to 86 which is going to be pretty insane because um you know, this is going to protect you from degens, makes degens do a lot less damage because of the damage reduction we have. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Nimis. So Nimis is pretty much going to be tripling your damage on this build for Molten Strike, at least. Uh, on Lightning Strike, not so much in, as important, but for Molten Strike specifically, Nimis is like triple damage. Reason for this is Molten Strike... Um, all the projectiles can shotgun and the projectiles are going to shoot out hit the target and then all of them are going to return to you so normally uh you see my molten strike uh is having uh four projectiles on it and then i have a, another five projectiles from the gmp so that's nine projectiles none of those nine projectiles usually three hit so we have three initial projectile hits and then all of the nine projectiles are then going to return and come right around here right at your feet and all those so pretty much all of the returns are going to hit so that's why nimis is like over triple damage because of it makes all the projectiles return and hit now if you don't have nimis you're going to be using a return in returning projectile support but the bad thing about that is it does have a 60 percent less hit damage on the returns and since the returns are most of your damage um it is uh, kind of sad so but yeah that's basically why nimis is best in slot you definitely do want one of these i think it's a good time to go over the molten strike like how do we calculate this damage um basically i have it set to 12 molten strike hits like we said we have three initial hits and then nine returns so that means 12 hits if the target is a big target it'll go up but generally 12 hits is a very conservative number and then we do have the melee hit because we can hit with the melee and the uh, balls at the same time okay so march of the legion boots not really much to say about these except get a plus five at least on the aura and then you need a plus one or plus two or you don't really need it but they're so cheap that you know might as well just get one all right so dawnbreaker uh important stats on this shield is going to be the explicit you can see 20 percent of fizz taken as fire basically you got to do the math add up all of your fizz taken as make sure you're at 100 percent and you're good to go and uh, for the implicit, Fizz Taken as Chaos is rather pricey, but you can run Fizz Taken as Fire, Cold or Lightning. Those are a lot cheaper. Do the exact same thing. So definitely get one of those if you're on a budget. Okay, let's take a look at the flask setup. So flasks, uh, we do need one flask that has a chance to avoid being stunned at 55%. Um, this is going to make us immune to stuns because uh, this time we're not going down to the left side to pick up Unwavering Stance. We're coming down to the right hand side. So we don't have the stun immunity here, so we have to get it on the flask. Uh, and then we have uh, increased armor. It's going to be one of the more valuable suffixes to get. And then here you can either get regen, um, this crafted regen mod, or uh, attack speed or increased evasion, either one. Uh, and then after that, uh, increased elemental resistances as suffixes. And the flasks of choice, I guess for me, is for harder content, basalt, stibnite, silver, ruby, this one you definitely cannot replace the ruby flask but you can replace like one of these right so if you want to move fast like what i do is i just take out the stib knight flask and then you know we, we are pretty pretty fast not like super fast but you know definitely definitely um good enough right and you can use a lot of other flasks on your last slot but bottled faith nice for the extra regen you get see when we use our bottled faith um we're getting quite a lot more um es regen it does also provide a lot of increased damage taken, which is pretty nice. Okay, so that is sort of all of the gear. Uh, let's go over the um, passive tree. So, uh, like you mentioned, in this setup, I'm 
using like some 35% increased effect jewels. But I think what you need to do is when you have your character, put your character together in the, together in the uh, POB, add in your jewels, turn on your auras in POB and check if you have enough reservation. If you don't have enough reservation, well, then maybe you have to get another jewel with increased effect or maybe buy an enlighten or lower your vitality gem levels and just try to fit everything in pretty much. So important things on the tree is, first of all, the militant faith. This one might be a little bit hard to find, but I think you can divine these. So basically what you do is you have a timeless jewel with reduced mana cost of skills for 10 devotion and increased effect of non-curse RS for 10 devotion. Uh, it does need to have both of these mods. And then you also need to have the high Templar Marxist. You can actually divine the seed, like the number, and it won't change the mana cost of skills and our effect. Or at least that's what I think. I haven't actually tried it, um, but you know, we can actually try it. Um, let's just do a quick little test over here. So it's my old timeless jewel. Let's just see. Uh, yeah, so it does work. All right, so you can see um, the reduced mana cost of skills and non curse aura effect did not change uh, when I divined it. So you can actually divine it to do exactly what I did here and then get the High Templar Marxist, put it in your tree. And um, just make sure that it is not replacing any nodes. As you can see, this one is actually perfect. It's not replacing any nodes. Oh, it's re no, yeah. Not replacing any nodes. And we do get the Transcendence Keystone. So that's pretty nice. See, mine over here actually does give me plus one to all max res, which is pretty pog. Okay, so that is the Timeless Jewel setup. Now, after that, uh, there's a couple things that are kind of interesting here. We do need one CB Jewel. Um, I guess you don't really need this if you have it on Unnatural Instinct, but yeah. So with the Milton Faith, one of the things we need for the reduced mana cost of skills is going to be Unnatural Instinct. Get our enough devotion for this reduced mana cost of skills. Um, you do need about at least 160. Yeah, I'm at 165, so yeah, 160-ish should be enough. Then after that, we come down here, and I guess there's not really much to say, but for tattoos, there's some cool things you can do for the strength one. I like going for the fire resistance. You can go armor or fire res. Um, whichever one. I think fire res is probably better. Um, and then increased effect of your marks. Pretty much all of your remaining dex tattoos are going to be for increased mark effect. Okay, let's go over the watcher's eye. So watcher's eye, like I said, one of the first things you need to do is make sure you have your PTA covered, right? Watcher's eye, if you are on a budget, go for a single purity of elements mod and maybe a discipline mod or some kind of damage mod. The good damage mod is going to be like um, Wrath, like damage damage pen with Wrath, probably. Um, you can't really use attack speed precision because we're not using that, so not really that many mods available. So the, like, I think the best ones, besides a triple purity Watcher's Eye, it's going to be something like this um, with a double purity and either increased energy shield recovery rate while affected by discipline or the flat discipline um, recovery rate. And that's going to boost up your ES recovery, especially in end game by quite a bit. Um, I guess there's some other good ones like this. The ES on hit is actually pretty nice as well. And there's also the lightning damage leached with wrath. Those are pretty nice as well. But the just having the flat regen, I think, is a little bit better, at least personally for me. Uh, okay, so melding of the flesh, make sure you get one that doesn't have a lot of minus elemental resistances. And I think the rest is pretty much kind of uh, self-explanatory. There are some nice, um, you know, cluster jewels you can go check out. But yeah, honestly, this passive tree, pretty simple. Not really much to say about it. So for ascendancy, what we're doing is this part is sort of similar for most Scion armor stackers. We go for champion and then path of duelist. Uh, so we get some extra points and this kind of stuff. And then um, usually we're going for Necromancer for the attack and cast speed. But this time we're going to go over to Guardian. So why Guardian? And Guardian gives you um, Aura Stormy skills, grant 3% increased recovery rate of life. Now this gets like attached to the Aura. So um, basically if we look at something like our Wrath. So we have, you know, some extra flat lightning damage and it says some more spell lightning damage now with the guardian ascendancy this wrath gem will also say you and your allies have three percent increased recovery rate of life now important thing is since it's attached to the aura this is also going to be being scaled by our aura effect 
So that 3% ends up being quite a bit more. And if we look at the calculations, uh, we can see our uh, recovery is that 3% is now all the way up to 8% because of all of the aura effect we currently have. Uh, very, very strong for getting uh, our ES regen. And this is why I actually do not want to play Chieftain, Armor Stacker, Juggernaut, Armor Stacker, Berserker, Pathfinder. Um, you know, I even thought of doing a Pathfinder one, but just the fact that they cannot get ES regen. Like if, if I were to do this on a, uh, a Chieftain, this is the ES regen you're going to have. Like literally cut in half or more. And it, it really depends on the content you're doing, I guess. So do you actually need 6k ES regen? Well, for most, the most part, no. Uh, if you're doing Delve, then you probably don't even need ES regen. I've, I've done 6,300 depth delve with like zero es regen all i had was es gain on hit and that was totally fine so for different content you might not need this but if you want to do valdos with feared like delir 100 delirious feared then you there's a lot of degen and es on hit just isn't going to cut it right so you need to actually have lots of es regen to be able to safely do that kind of content and that's why um scion is or you know scion or or templar or garden guardian is um what do you call it best in my opinion because of all of this es regen you can get and armor stackers are always going to be tanky against hit damage so that's not really a problem but the problem is degen that's like the big problem for any kind of armor stacker and scion deals with it the best because it's able to scale it's ES regen, like to the moon, basically. Okay, so Pantheons. Pantheons, uh, we're doing the Soul of Arakali. Uh, and then we have the Ralakesh, so it takes care of bleed. And uh, yeah, pretty much it for the Pantheons. Now, uh, from here, let's go over what a more endgame version will look like. And then we'll also go over the, um, like, the no Nimis uh, setup. And also an experimental setup I made using two swords. That was actually kind of interesting. Right, so this is the uh, very, very budget setup that I was playing when I originally swapped over to the build. You can see our full DPS is only 24 million DPS, and that's because we're not using a Nimus, basically. Because we're not using the Nimus, um, all of our returning projectiles, which are the bulk of our damage, are have you know having a hefty minus 60%. Um, damage on them so uh, instead of doing 12 balls I'm only calculating five because um, of the you know minus 60% damage just kind of average I don't know how accurate this would be I guess if you wanted to do this more accurately you could have one set up for your initial projectiles like the three you hit and then you can have one with like the eight uh, oh no not 38 eight and then you want to make this one so minus 60 percent damage and you do this by just kind of like uh removing some support gems something like this right and then you add this in the full dps and you get something similar to this like yeah 28 million oh wait these are on the melee hits we need to change this to the balls um so you can see yeah it's something similar to this right so like 28 mil maybe i'm not really sure how accurate this but i think this is pretty accurate right so What's uh, different in this version? Uh, basically, so we're not using a Nimus. So we have two rings. We have a Grace Aura Implicit Ring. You can also just use a Ruby Ring or a, um, a Moonstone Ring for more energy shield. Uh, one cool thing about this build, if we look at the amount of mana I have, it's 1337 mana. It's pretty pog. You see, in this version of the build, my Grace Aura is actually costing um, zero mana because I have this synth ring. Um, but if you don't have this ring, it's fine. It'll cost like, you know, 50 mana. And you'll be totally fine or just need to get a little bit more reservation but you can see we're using two voices um pretty much nothing here has changed we are only using one 35 percent increased effect jewel yeah only one one 35 percent increased effect one 25 percent increased effect and our enlightens are one level four and one level three so you don't really need that many enlightens but basically it's you just have to get your you know mana costs down get your get enough mana to use your auras and if you see um we're not even using a oh we are using vitality okay never mind so that's pretty much all that's really different in this build is there's no nimus right and there's like a few less um empowers i mean not empowers um enlightens and this kind of stuff 
All right, so this is a more end game uh, version of the build. And the difference with this one is you can see we have a lot more energy shield, a lot more energy shield regen, and quite a lot more damage. And the reason for this is, well, we have actually swapped over to a Grasping Mail and a Hubris Circlet, and we're not using the Formless Flame and Lightning Coil combo anymore. So the Grasping Mail will allow us to get quite a lot more energy shield and energy shield regen, as well as this helmet, uh, giving us a lot more gem levels and this kind of stuff. Uh, aside from that, a lot of the gear is sort of the same, but the main changes to this version is going to be um, getting a Grasping Mill set up going, uh, pretty much. So that's going to be like the next milestone after the um, Nimbus version of the Formless Flame and Lightning Coil version. You're going to pretty much just be making or buying a Grasping Mill and this uh, Transcendence Helmet and swapping over to that. Uh, this version also does come with three passive voices instead of the five passive voices, uh, giving us quite a lot more aura effect and more maximum resistances. Okay, so this is a very experimental setup uh, that I'll share with you guys. With you guys, and I did actually try this out. I'm um, not this version specifically, but something similar to this. And what we're doing is we're running two replica dream feathers, basically. Now, I don't really have 100% Fizz taken as. Now, this number may look pretty good. 200 Fizz max hit, that's great, right? But that's with Molten Shell active. If you take Molten Shell off, uh, 74. Okay, that's still pretty good, but that's with the Flask up, right? So, um, Flask off, 18k max hit, Fizz hit. I mean, they're, you know, not that bad, come to think about it. But that's what I said. Like, it's a little bit experimental in that, like, Fizz, like, very heavy Fizz damage will probably kill you. But... You are going to be doing quite a lot of damage. You can see 250 mil DPS um, with this build. And if you did have better gear, like say you had um, a better Watcher's Eye with more Fizz taken as, you could get this Fizz max hit up quite a bit more. Or if you have, you know, as long as you have your flask up, you're actually totally fine, right? So this might be good for someone who is like, you know, I don't really care about being super, super tanky. I just want to do max damage. Um, this is still going to be enough for all content in the game. I mean, as long as your flask is up, you're pretty much not dying. And even if your flask is down, if you just push your molten shell, then, um, you know, you should be fine. In most cases, 50k, fizz max hit. I mean, that's pretty big. It does have quite a lot of ES regen as well, like almost close to 4k ES regen. So that's very nice as well. You're going to recover your ES like pretty much instantly. So, I mean, but, and the reason why I'm saying it's kind of like use at your own risk is because of this Fizz max, his part, uh, max hit part. But like, say, if you had a triple purity Watcher's Eye, then this wouldn't be a problem, right? Um, you would be able to get enough Fizz taken as conversion to actually run the setup with two swords. It is using the Lightning Coil Formless Flame uh, combo, but you're able to actually use two swords and get, you know, a decent amount of ES regen. Okay, so I think that is going to be it for the build guide, guys. Uh, I think we covered pretty much everything. Um, and I will be making updates, build updates, as I progress my character. I still have to make a new Grasping Mail now that I bricked my other one. So I do have the base, just have to craft it. Uh, and then we do need to buy the voices and all these kind of things. So we'll be making build updates if you guys want to follow along. If you are more advanced, you know, in the build progression, then I'm also be making... Uh, and updating the POBs for the, you know, end game versions, or at least how I picture I would want to be building it. Of course, these things might change in the future. If they do, I guess we'll make videos about it. But that'll be it for this one, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.